Hello and welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator, the start of a very long journey where I take a humble little Cessna 172 from Australia all the way to the UK, covering eight and a half thousand nautical miles. And that's direct, obviously, we're not gonna be doing this direct. We will be stopping off at many different countries with a little gimmick along the way. We will come to that gimmick later. Anyway, we will be starting at Woomera Airport. Why Woomera? Well, because that's actually where my Cessna 172 is. And by that, by my Cessna 172, I mean one that I just purchased in FS Economy, a virtual economy sort of add-on, if you will, for uh, your flight simulators. Gives your flight extra purpose as you haul passengers or cargo from one destination to another for virtual currency. And I've saved up enough of that to buy myself the little Cessna 172. So let's move on to the FS Economy stuff now. I will put a timestamp in the description if you do want to skip it. So here we are on FS Economy. Let's go ahead and take a look at our aircraft. Uh, in case you're unfamiliar with FS Economy, um, I imagine most of you are if you're watching this, it's kind of like a, it's a virtual, I guess, economic add-on. So you can do flights, you can pick up passengers or cargo, deliver them to certain places depending on what's available, what aircraft you're using. Uh, in fact, let's just go ahead and I don't know, we'll go to the home airport of where our little Cessna 172 is. By the way, this is where I bought it. It, it needs repairs. So it, I did get it at a discount price because I'm gonna have to do repairs immediately right off the bat. It's also got 0% fuel. Um, but before we get to that, let me just show you quickly what FS Economy is. Essentially, you, you know, let's say you don't own an aircraft, you can rent an aircraft. Um, so for instance, I can rent this because this is my aircraft, uh, but let's say it wasn't and I wanted the this Embraer here, Embraer, I can never say that word, um, and you can choose to rent it dry or wet depending on whether or not you want to pay for the fuel or not. Sometimes it can be advantageous to rent it dry, in fact a lot of the time it is, if it's already got a lot of fuel in it. Uh, yeah, and you just pick up an aircraft, you would then select a number of passengers, let's say you wanted to go to YCEE, 155 nautical miles south. It is, so you'd grab, you know, have as many passengers as you can possibly take. Obviously, each aircraft has a different amount. This one here, for instance, 52 seats. So uh, you may not use that very often. You'd take up one of these bigger ones, I suppose, of something like that. Maybe the 25 passengers here. I, even then, would that cover the cost of running the aircraft? Because you do also require additional crew for big aircraft. But obviously, that does not affect me. I'm just a humble little Cessna 172. I can carry up to three passengers. If I am if I run at 100% fuel, I can only pick up two passengers. Do need to remember that. Um, okay, let's move on to the actual aircraft itself. So its registration is Victor Hotel Juliet Foxtrot Uniform. And um, it's got no fuel in, which is interesting because the last journey it had was uh, a total distance of 874 miles. If you know how that's even possible in this thing, could you please let me know? Because that could be quite useful on this uh, excursion. That's, that's phenomenal, an eight hour flight. I don't know if this person cheated. I, I mean, I doubt it because to be honest, they're quite good at catching out people that cheat. In fact, they're very good at it, but I just don't know how that's even possible. Yeah, anyway, it's been, it's a very um, well-traveled aircraft, it turns out. Um, it goes, it's last, when was it uh, last, first used, sorry, back in 2007. In fact, it goes further back than that. Keep, it still keeps going back. 2006, 2005, I have a feeling it was 2004. No, 2005, excellent. So, uh, coincidentally, that is just after the Garmin 1000 came out, and I'm using the Garmin 1000 version, so I'd like to think it was maybe one of the first off the line when that first got uh, released. That's, that's what I like to think anyway. Uh, okay, so also, um, I mean, this isn't going to come up for you. Um, I, I'll just take a screenshot of it and show you, but it's, uh, like I say, when I say it's well-traveled, it's also a very, uh, quite literally well-traveled. It's been all over the globe. It looks like it started off in Portugal, then it made its way over to, I guess, uh, Florida, Miami area. Looks like all around there, probably some of the islands down there. Um, all the way then over to the west coast as well. 
it's like the sort of LA, San Francisco area, I think that might be. And then it got obviously shipped as cargo all the way down to Australia, where it seems to have spent the bulk of its, uh, of its flying career by the looks of things. So interesting. And we are just about to create one giant line all the way across <laughs> this map. So it's going to be a very, very well-traveled aircraft. Pretty cool. All right, anyway, it is time to now make some repairs to this thing. So let's go ahead and we want to select action maintenance. I've never done this before, by the way. I've really I've never done any of this, so... Estimated quote under 5,000. Okay, that's, I guess, all right. We'll go for the... Uh, it appears there's the... So we can use the local FBO, but normally the player-owned stuff is cheaper. I'm guessing this is a player-owned thing, so... How much the previous maintenance checks cost? Not too much, actually, so... Do you want to perform this maintenance for under 5,000? Let's do it, we've got enough money in the bank. Okay. What's the report? Cost us 1,300. Actually, pretty damn good. That's that's fine. Uh, time since last check, 97 hours, airframe. Okay, I think we're good then, that's it, right? Ah, was it these I was meant to do? Okay, no. Ooh. We don't want to do an engine replacement, we just need to do, I think, the 100 hour check. That's it there. Because we would exceed the 100 hour mark. So let's go ahead and we'll go for the cheaper one then. Basically, you have to check the engine every 100 hours for maintenance. So let's go ahead and perform that. Yes, please. Okay, good. Fantastic. And that should be it, I believe. Conducted the check. I may have just wasted money there. I'm not too sure. Again, I probably should have looked up how to do this properly. That's it, really. So there we go. The little uh, maintenance sign that was there has gone, which means it is now ready to go. And we're actually going to go ahead and refuel the aircraft as well. So if we go ahead, got it here. Uh, so in order to do that, we're going to need to actually select it. So we it ourselves. Fantastic. And we are going to. Fuel it up by going to the my flight page, and we're going to go the whole way, completely the whole way. Oh, interesting! You can defuel. I, you can only do that if you own it. Apparently, that's pretty cool, actually. I like that. Uh, so we can actually get fuel a little bit cheaper than the market. That's pretty nice there. Uh, we'll go for the full 54 gallons, please. Completely filled up. Don't often do that. No need to. It's just so I have an idea of what my max cargo payload is, isn't it? to be 210 kilos because sometimes we may only be taking cargo as opposed to passengers that is also an option so let's actually look and see if we can get ourselves any passengers so i'm looking today to go to alice springs and that's the only one that goes to alice springs it's for no money it's just fuel on its own which is a bit useless uh, so it looks like we're not going to be taking up any passengers now what you can do and what i recommend doing most of the time is doing little little journeys, picking up a few passengers, then moving on to another place, pick up some more passengers maybe to get to the same place. But this video is more of a proof of concept, this, uh, this part one here. Uh, it's just a proof of concept essentially. So we're just gonna make a direct flight to Alice Springs and that's it. So I don't even need to, I don't even need to pick up a passenger, set a destination. I'll just, ju I'll just activate FS Economy, the client, um, press activate, press start flight, and it will say that I'm in the Cessna 172. Then when I finally arrive to Alice Springs, I should be able to just uh, finish the flight and it will say that I'm at Alice Springs. That's what I think will happen anyway. Uh, so yeah, anyway, back to the simulator. All right, so back to the sim we are. Let's go ahead and change this to Alice Springs. That's where I wanna be going today. We kinda of just wanna cover some good ground. And we're just going to make this a direct flight. That's a little bit quicker than I was expecting, actually. So that is good. And we're going to make it a nice early morning flight with a few scattered clouds. Actually, not even scattered clouds, just very, very light clouds. What is it? What do you call it? Uh, few clouds, yes. Few clouds, not scattered clouds. Sure. Uh, so it should be quite a nice, pleasant flight, actually. Maybe if I make it 20 minutes sooner, we're going to do the whole you know, five minutes sooner. No, uh, we'll make it half past. We'll make it half past. Want to catch that nice sunrise, don't we? Mm, that should be good. That should be good indeed. Uh, okay, so we're pretty much ready to go. But before we go, I want to introduce to you the other gimmick of this series. 
So one of the reasons why we all travel around the world is food. And that's something I want to incorporate in this series. So I'm going to basically be making a recipe or cooking something from wherever it is in the world that I am in that particular video. Maybe uh, well, my, most of them are going to be at the end of the video. So it'll be when I get to my destination, whatever country I'm in, I will make something from that. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to keep it really simple. This, is, this isn't even a recipe. It's merely a taste test. And today it's going to be Vegemite. Here it is in tube form. Proudly made in Australia since 1923. Didn't realize how old it was. And you see here on the back, it once it uh, unblurs. Essential for brain function, your nervous system, energy release, helps fight fatigue, all the things we need as a uh, budding young pilot about to embark on a four hour flight. But it wouldn't be a proper taste test if we didn't give it some competition. Of course, we're gonna have to bring in some Marmite. I remember Marmite from my childhood. I used to love it when I was very young and then I kind of went off it and now I never really had it since. So uh, it's gonna be interesting tasting it again. So here it is. You've got Marmite on the left, Vegemite on the right. Vegemite, a much darker appearance. I realize how unappealing this does look and apologies, I'm, I am using my phone to record this. I don't have a proper camera. So let's try the first one. So Marmite, gotta say, really, really strong flavor, really strong. Um, yeah, so we cleanse the palate and now it's time to test our Vegemite. And I have to admit, the initial taste of Vegemite is actually perhaps a little bit better than Marmite. However, it does have this lingering aftertaste that kind of reminds me of a, a sort of stale brewery. I mean, it is that yeast after all that uh, really flavors this thing, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeast extract. Um, but I'm not really too sure which one I prefer. The Vegemite's definitely got a softer taste, so we're going to give it one more taste each after we cleanse the palate, starting with the Vegemite this time. Then we'll finish off with the Marmite. And I'm not too sure which one I'd prefer. I think on the spot, I would probably go for Marmite. However, I can definitely see why some people might prefer Vegemite as it is a slightly softer taste. All right, so full of toast, it's now on to the flight itself and uh, looking a little bit buggy actually, uh, which is no surprise because I was having problem with the orange version of the Cessna here. It really was causing it to freak out. Um, in fact, at one point, the plane was completely invisible. It's pretty entertaining actually. I mean, fly, trying to fly an invisible plane. Problem is, is you couldn't even start it up because you couldn't even press any of the uh, <laughs> any of the switches or anything. It, it was just the plane didn't exist. It was so strange. Uh, but anyway, so it's going to be a yellow Cessna going forward, and there it is, Victor Hotel. We will name her for short. Well, let's get into the cockpit. Ah, so this is my first early morning flight, or you know, I've not even done an early morning or evening flight before. Um, it appears we have lots of random lights in the sky, lots of moons. Uh, well, that can't be right, can it? <laughs> okay, so they, they, it was just an update, all right? I'm recording this a few weeks in advance. There was there was an update, and I have a feeling it's gone ahead and messed things up a bit, so thanks for that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to do the first couple of bits on the checklist just to start the engine and whatever comes afterwards. So let's go for start engine. Okay, so... Throttle open a quarter of an inch. Looks, yeah, that'll do. Mixture has to be cut off. So mixture control out. Standby battery switch, test and hold for 20 seconds. That's like, that's the battery. Uh, that's that standby battery. So you have to hold it if I recall. I do you think so? 20 seconds is kind of long. I'm not even counting, I'm just sort of Roughly gonna guess it in my head. Uh, so yeah, we'll do this checklist and we will do the after starting engine checklist. That's what we will do. All right, so that's roughly 20 seconds, I think. And now we've got to arm it, ready that the verify that PFD comes on. Oh, yes, lovely. Your PFD, hello PFD. I thought you were Garmin 1000. All right, um, will that, oh, it will, excellent. Saves a lot of aggravation. It's the caution. Standby battery. All right. Engine indicating system. Check parameters. What's that? Like, all right, whatever. Bus E volts. We have, make sure it's 24.4 minimum or 20, no, it's 24.4. It's 24 minimum. Good. M bus, check 1.5 volts or less. Lovely. And 
fantastic. Check verify discharge of battery S amps. Well, I'm guessing the minus means it's discharged, so that's good, I guess. St standby battery annunciator is on. Yeah, that's on. Propeller area is clear. Let me guess, there's a dude there thinking about pushing me. Yeah, there he is. He's looking away though. Not really paying attention, so yeah. We're not going to use him. We don't need pushback. We're, we're bloody Cessna and there's nothing really around me. So we'll just sort of nip on past him around the side there. All right, master battery, alt, and master whatever, on. Good. The beacon light, on. Mm, bacon light. Uh, landing light on. Do we need any other lights on? Doesn't say, so don't know. Auxiliary fuel pump on for three to five seconds, then switch off. I believe that's down here. Yes. Okay. Good. Feet ready to break. Oh, on my uh, joystick here. Uh, ignition start. Okay, is that it? We don't even need to do anything with the magnetos at all. All right, fair enough. And it needs to be rich when the engine starts. Hang on, I've not leaned to the mixture. I missed that. Lean it. There we go, rich when engine starts. We want it about a thousand RPM. That's just a little bit high. Yeah, that looks good to me. All right, let's. Uh, can we have you off? All right, good. Okay. Yeah, on to after engine start. Brilliant. So just for one thousand RPM. Sure. Check the oil pressure. Uh, looks like it's just within tolerance. And well, we can't see the low volts enunciator because it's on this screen now. Is that it there? Yeah, it appears there's nothing there, so now we need to go ahead and switch on avionics completely. Over here. Fantastic. Flaps are indeed up. And we are ready to go. We're ready to taxi anyway. Do we need any other lights on? We'll go ahead and do this. We'll throw on the taxi lights. We'll throw on nav lights. Strobe lights on. Parking brake release. Brakes test. Rudder test. Let's actually check our... Uh, yeah. It's looking good. You can sort of see it moving a bit up and down. Doesn't sound too healthy, does it? But <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. Uh, that's all we're actually going to do with the checklist. Going to keep this as simple and straightforward as possible. So our flights. How are we going to do this? Let's go ahead and bring this in a little bit more. We are going to make our way down here. We're going to take runway. I think I looked at the top of this, I think it said it was runway 36, which to be honest it looks more like runway 01 or 02 or something to me, but alright. Uh, and then once we get up to this GPS line, we're going to go ahead and pop in the GPS, we're also going to use... Mind you, the GPS is so dodgy, I might not do that. I might just use the heading. So actually, we're going to go ahead and switch our heading, it's already on zero, that's pretty close. We'll switch it to 350. Uh, we want to get... Our altitude to about 3000 and we're going to use, yes, FLC mode, absolutely, so we can hold a steady speed on our climb. We don't really need to think too much about it. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Parking brake is still on, so let's go ahead and switch that in. Oh, sorry dude, watch yourself. I think we may have taken his head off. <laughs> Excellent start. Immediately decapitated someone. Immediately. We're also going a little bit quickly, aren't we? Uh, right, so yeah, I think this is where we want to be. This looks like it's more for vehicles. <laughs> but no, okay, yeah, no, we're, we're fine, we're fine. It just looks more like a driving lane as opposed to, you know, the line that you follow, but it doesn't really matter. Now, we didn't even need the full runway to start. We could just come up here, but we're going to take the full runway anyway, so. To be fair, we could probably take off there. I mean, yeah, seriously. Uh, our barometer, are we really 500 feet of, of the air? I've not really done a lot of preparation, I will admit, but yeah, I'm pressing V, which should uh, reset the barometer to whatever it's actually meant to be. 
so that we have the correct altitude, and it appears we're fine, so fine. 29.2, it is. Uh, we've got altitude set, heading set. As soon as we get five, well, say 500 feet in the air, we're already 500 feet. Because once we get to about a thousand, I'll go ahead and I'll pop that mode. We'll throw heading on. Should probably turn flight director on. Oh wait, I've just gone ahead and messed that up, haven't I? Flight director, yeah, let's turn it right, Flight director is now on. We want it on heading. Right, I mean, we're going way too fast. We're going to 30 knots here. We're going to take off if we're not careful. <laughs> take off on the taxiway. What is the limit, actually, isn't it? It's 20 knots, right? That's the taxi limit. Yeah, it's got to be because we're doing that now and it still feels a little bit wild. Uh, should we stop here? No, we'll stop on the runway and we'll do another little go over. Go over the flight pattern a little bit to you. So what I'm going to do is we are actually going to be. We'll start off at 3,000 feet. That is sorry. Well, yeah, we'll start at 3,000 feet on our way to Alice Springs. And about halfway through, because the altitude is gradually going to increase. Let's go ahead and lower that. Right, parking brake set. All right, let's. Yeah, let me tell you what I'm going to do. We will then go up to 5,000 feet after a couple of hours, about halfway through the flight, because we're going to see the ground gradually getting closer to us if we stay at 3,000 feet. It never reaches 3,000, but still, it's just, you know, you want to give yourself some breathing room, obviously. And yeah, we're just going to sit on the GPS line the entire way there, pretty much. Um, so yeah, 467 nautical miles, that is uh, pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Uh, but we'll be fine. One thing I must make sure I do is, oh, that's not right, it's meant to be this, there it is. Uh, we do not want to activate the GPS unless we are on the line because it is janky as anything. It just stalls the plane. It's absolutely awful. All right, trim is not set for takeoff. There we go. So we need to make sure trim set for takeoff. You see there. Landing lights. Don't need that. Fuel pump off. Pilot heat off. Generally speaking, we look pretty good. Nothing I can think of. So we're going to rotate at about 50 knots, I would say. Yeah, 50, 50 knots will rotate. Um, oh, I need to start FS Economy. That was close. <laughs> start the flight. Start the flight. All right, good. Flight has begun. Well, that was really close. I'd have done all of this for nothing if I hadn't started that. Sorry. Um, all sorted. You probably wouldn't have seen it because uh, I don't think the screen capture is doing recording anything other than flight simulator right now. Okay. Parking brake off. Slowly bring it up. Let's go. Alright, try and keep it straight. Up to 30. Close to 50. Alright, let's start a rotation. Rotate, baby, rotate. There we go. Very good. Very, yes, nice. All right, let's see if we can get fairly straight on the runway. That's 60 knots. Something we want to do is uh, try and keep it at about 17 knots, I think, our climb. 69 knots is okay. So heading combined with should be okay. We do that now. Should be able to release it. Yes, I'm not. I'm not touching anything right now. I'm letting it do its thing. That said, the speed has dropped a bit. Set it for 69 knots. That's absolutely fine. In fact, can we switch over to GPS now? Now that we're on the line, let me quickly spin this around. Okay, switched over to GPS because we're pretty much on the line. It shouldn't go too wild. Fantastic. But that actually worked. Very well, very well indeed. There we go. Have a look at our morning view. It's uh, yeah, it looks like Australia to me. <laughs> oh, damn! That is a that's an orange sky, all right. That is something. All right, let's get to our altitude of three thousand feet and uh, go from there.
So I've got to admit, I am just so impressed with um, Microsoft Flight Simulator, despite all the uh, the janky avionics currently. I mean, it, it is quite janky at the moment. Some stuff isn't in the game. The GPS is absolutely wild. I mean, it tries to get on that purple line as if its life depends on it. It really does. Uh, but it looks, I mean, this is at the middle of nowhere, Australia. Uh, so it's nothing exciting, but um, still, it's just the lighting in this is just brilliant. Uh, I could never get anything good with x 11. You had to do so much work, um, even though the uh, the aircraft flew very well in x 11, really, really well, and I definitely got my money's worth out of it. I'm just looking forward to seeing where we go with Microsoft Flight Simulator here. All right, so we are getting close to 3,000, so that's going to change momentarily. Change. There we go. It's going to try and hold a 3,000. So we're going to keep the throttle in. I want to build up some airspeed now. It's going to take all day. Just leveling off. go. Now at 80 knots. I want to see if we can get, uh, I want to get just over 100 knots what I'm looking for. What we do want to do as well, we want to try and up the RPM a little bit once we, um, in the air, we want to lean the mixture ever so slightly. I did not mean to do what I just did there. I think I cut it off there for a moment. But as you see, that's, the engine's really purring now. We've really built up some speed. Let's go ahead and bring the throttle out. Bit. Just a little bit more actually. Right, gallons per hour. I believe each one of these is two, so two, four, six, eight. I believe cruising is ten. We're just under ten there, so that's nice. And we are just over a hundred knots, so I think that is it. Bring this out. Yeah. Now the journey begins. It's gonna take um It's not ours, is it? <laughs> I assume it's not ours. It can't be, no. It's been minutes. So, yeah. It's going to be roughly a uh, 3 hour and 45 minute flight from this point. But look at that. I mean, well, can't we see anything? <laughs> it's a blur. But, uh, the sky is looking very nice. Very nice. I said there's clouds here in the way. Maybe you want to fly at 5,000 earlier? Mm, nah. Gonna just uh, cruise along at this altitude for a while and enjoy the sunrise as our long journey begins.
All right, so we have made a lot of progress. We are now only 21 nautical miles out from Alice Springs International Airport. Is it international? I think it is. Uh, 11 minutes, that's it. We have covered a lot of ground. And by the looks of it, the ground is well, getting closer to us again. We're actually 5,000 feet in the air. The altitude here is over 1,700 meters. I think it's, yeah, it's pretty high up in the uh, middle of Australia, it turns out. This entire area, even there, look, it's even higher than that. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, going to be a bit tough for the Cessna, especially given how hot it is as well. I don't know if that's going to affect some of the, yeah, look at this, look at this. Oil pressure's gone up, oil temperature, I've never seen it that high. I'm pretty sure I haven't. I don't know what that's about. I don't know what this is, but yeah. Look how much fuel we've, um, yeah, we've used up. All the way down to about, that looks like about mm, 15 gallons left. Probably. Anyway, anyway, so the runway we're going to be using at Alice Springs is runway 35. Uh, that would be this one here. I believe it has a heading of 353. This little one here on the left. So that's the sort of airport, uh, the sort of runway, sorry, that this plane would land at. I don't think we deserve that gigantic runway there. So we'll come off here. We come up here, park ourselves there. Those look like sort of spots where you would park a plane like this, doesn't it? Uh, so to, in order to line up properly, we're going to need to well, we're going to slow down, descend, all of that. Uh, but we're going to need to get a good heading going. So I'm actually going to switch over to heading. Synchronize it for a moment. Actually, let's not, let's not do that. Let's uh, swing it around here. I mean, we're not too far off. We're at three three five. We need to be at three five three. So we just need to switch over to heading as opposed to GPS. So you get a good lineup. So we want to go this way a little bit and then head straight back up again. Probably just a little bit more. Sorry, I don't know what I'm doing there. Come to think about it, if I say synchronized heading, it seems to go spinning round to the right, which I don't particularly understand. As we can see anything in the distance yet, yeah, I'm guessing Alice Springs is probably somewhere over there. Yeah, it feels like it went all that way actually. No. 17 nautical miles away, so it's probably a bit further than that. Uh, but look, we've got a road. We've got a road here, people. I don't see any cars. I saw some cars earlier, at some point. Uh, yeah, okay. Just carry on going this way for a bit. Probably we'll go a bit more west, just so we can line up a bit sooner. Easier to go by this, probably. This one's be about... In fact, we could probably turn back in a moment. I mean, we can just line it up when we get close to it. It's not really a big deal. It's just to make the landing a little bit easier for us in this case. All right, that should probably do. So let's switch it back to 353. About 350, probably. Uh, we do have a wind, don't we? Coming from, from down this way, a southwesterly wind. Only three knots, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, this is good. This is very good, actually. Yes. We're 14 nautical miles out, we appear to be facing Alice Springs perfectly. Or the airport, rather. The airport is, I believe, south of the actual town itself. And now we probably want to descend a little bit, so let's go ahead and bring it down to... If it's 1700, we want to be about 1500 feet in the air. So 3,800 feet, we're going to use the vertical speed mode. I used that earlier, uh, I'll use it again here. Bring it down by about 600 feet. We're going to pull back on the throttle a bit to avoid any overspeed. We're also going to have to bring in the throttle mixture as well. Don't know if I meant to bring it in the whole way, perhaps. So bring it in a little bit more. So as you take the throttle out, less throttle mixture means less fuel for the engine generally not a great thing. The engine does need fuel after all. Okay, so still 12 nautical miles to go. Probably not going to be able to see it just yet. Okay, we are drifting a little bit to the right, so I'm going to bring it a few degrees this way. We shouldn't actually be landing in a tailwind like this. You, you absolutely should not do that, but uh, hey, I'm going to break the rules this time. It's the first flight I can get away with whatever I want. 
<laughs> as long as we actually land it safely, of course, on the flight count, so, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, still no sign of anything, then again it's probably, it's probably still a little bit too far out, doing okay, we're still going at 100 knots, which is good, there we go, 3,800, push the throttle back in, alright, good. We, want to, we will want to slow down in a bit, but I'm going to just give it a, a few more miles. And then what we'll do is we'll slow it down. So it turns out I'm not even remotely in line of this thing. It's pretty much a dead center. Um, <laughs> dead center, really. So let's go ahead and... No, not that way. Swing around here a bit. Pretty much go west. Bring the mixture control right in. I don't think we do need to do that. 80%. Yeah, we get a lot more RPM. Not the speed is what we're looking for right now, but okay. It does kind of feel like cheating using that, but it doesn't really matter because we do have we do have the same map here anyway. Okay, we can use this. Uh, but look at the temperature. Are we even going to be able to do a midday flight next week? I'm not too sure. But this is new. I don't think I've ever seen this do anything. EGT. I don't know what that means. I really don't. Not too sure. It looks like we're almost in line now, though. So a couple more seconds, and then bring it back by the time it's three knot winds. So I'm going to say about three, four, eight. That should be just brilliant. 7.4 nautical miles out. We should be able to see the runway soon, or at least uh, some inclination that there is an airport there. I don't think I pointed out what specifications I actually have this on, and I do uh, just want to say that it is a combination of medium high, mostly on high. Don't have anything on ultra because that's just ridiculous. I can't be doing that. <laughs> uh, no way. But uh, yeah, it's a combination of medium and high that we have it on here. So, uh, so we're going to go with that. Looks like that's the one runway. There's our runway. That's it right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it out of autopilot. Yeah, back on. Do you want landing lights? Probably yes, I imagine. We want to slow down as well. So mixture control in. But now we're just going to slow down. I'm going to bring it off autopilot. So uh, that's one way of doing it. Okay, good. I am now in control. Kill the throttle. We're going to maintain our altitude. I'm going to just drift it slightly to the left here. Bring it in. Yeah, that's good. We'll be we'll be online of that soon. So there you go. It's within that white line here, which means we're going to be able to deploy flaps. Fortunately, I do have that hot keyed anyway, so I'm going to wait a little bit longer. In no rush right now, because um, we're still a little bit out. That's seven nautical miles. Maybe we're not that far out, actually. In five. Wait, be quiet. Be quiet, Garmin. You speak when you're spoken to. So, yeah, we're holding steady up. Here we've got a gradual descent as well, which is fantastic. 400 meters, 400 feet a meet, uh, 400 feet a minute. Uh, wow! Look at all those mountains in the distance. That's it. I see a road going through it. You see there that road there? I've got an idea for my next flight, and I was thinking of doing a VFR flight where I have to just follow one road to a particular airport. I'm looking possibly at going for Tennant Creek. That's what I'm considering. All right, let's um, bring down a level of flaps. A bit steady. I want to keep a descent going. I think we're a little bit too high. So now we're at 450, probably bring it to about 500 feet a minute, because we are two minutes out, apparently. Bring the throttle back a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I'm thinking of doing a manual VFR flight, so no, I'm not allowed to use autopilot. I've got to follow this road. It's kind of a good... Uh, a good training exercise, I suppose. 
Uh, but in the meantime, let's focus on landing this plane, right? Let's just focus on it. So we are coming up to 3,000 feet, which means we've got about 1,300 feet to go. So yes, bring it down to about mm, 750, because we are too high. Not the longest runway, uh, but it is enough. It's absolutely fine for us. Bring it down a little bit more. There we go. Nice controlled, uh, nice controlled dive, <laughs> if there is such a thing. Probably want to bring out another level of flaps because we're going to be coming in maybe a little bit too uh, too fast. I think we're looking pretty good right now. It's only a two knot wind. That said, still a slight tailwind, so we shouldn't actually be landing this way. Probably should have uh, come around from the other side. I'm going to bring in one more level of flaps. Oop, don't know, cabin airflow. Let's just leave that. Anyway, where am I? Control space, reset the camera. Okay. I do kind of like to land like this sometimes. Well, in certain aircraft I do. I'm in the uh, DA-62. Easier. All right, 500 feet. Yeah, that sounds about right. We'll just apply a little bit more throttle. I'll do it. I'll do it. Bring it back. Well, regardless of what happens at this point, this is without a doubt one of my best approaches since I've uh, returned to flight simming. <laughs> and I'm sure uh, all of you can do it better, but <laughs> for me, this is pretty good actually. Okay, we were about, probably at about 200 feet. Wanna not cut the engines just yet. Yeah, all right, I think we'll cut them now. Coming down a little bit too fast. Yep, cut them now. Oh, a little bit of a bump. A little bit of a bump. We should have done a little bit more flaring there, but uh, that, was, that was satisfactory. That was satisfactory. Uh, what's that over there? Hmm. Alright, anyway, we're going to do, as I said, we're going to just run, we'll go up to the end of this runway. Turn off to the left. Uh, yeah, and just park there. Those look like parking spots to me. We'll leave it there. Uh, so there you go. That's the first flight of many, many flights. Uh, I'm going to bring in more and more, uh, I don't know, things to do on the flight, as it were. So that it's not as simple as just plug in a GPS and go. I'm going to have to do a lot more than just that. Or do like uh, IFR flight plans at some point. Uh, plenty of VFR flying as well, especially once we get along the coast. Coastal regions are great for that. Not to mention some tricky to navigate in, uh, mountainous regions can be good for that as well. So yeah. Right, let's park this baby up. This is the... Uh... Oh, helipads. <laughs> Whatever, I'm taking a helipad. I'm taking a helipad, man. Why not? <laughs> uh, might as well swing it around. Lovely. All right, parking brake on. Fantastic. And I believe on FS Economy, my plane is going to be in Alice Springs now, which is excellent. So there you have it. That's the first flight. I hope you've enjoyed it. It was more of a concept video to see how this is going to work for me. I'm hoping to do this every Wednesday. However, there is a chance that that's not actually going to happen. Um, I mean, it probably is, probably is for a while, but now and again I may give myself a week off because there's going to be a lot of editing involved, I reckon, if I want to do it the way I want to do it. Um, but I, I don't want to do anything less than that. Uh, so anyway, I hope you'll join me next week. It's going to be a VFR flight, a lot more interesting, a shorter flight, and we are going to be taking passengers on FS Economy. So hopefully I will see you next time. See ya.